Salvete Spectators, it's Master Post back in our Castilian tutorial series or campaign. And today we're going to talk about the Holy Roman Empire. Now, there is a map mode, the Imperial map mode, it calls it, where you can see the Empire. It is actually a huge chunk of Europe, more than modern day Germany, of course. A uh, lot of parts of Italy and France, Netherlands, Belgium. Czech Republic, Austria, Polish parts here. And they don't concern us because we are Castile, but for many, many nations they're important. They, I say they, the members of the Holy Roman Empire. Now, if you are a member state, that is if you are, for instance, Milan, or a member state is where when the capital of a province, of a nation, is located within the borders of the Holy Roman Empire then you are a member. You get bonuses. For instance, I think building cost and tech cost and stability increase is cheaper and so forth. A little bit better. They have penalties too, because expanding within the empire is a little bit more difficult. The emperor is like the shepherd to its sheep. He looks out for his little princess. A prince is a member of the empire that they don't get annexed by foreign powers, that they stay independent, that... And it's better for the Empire if there are more small nations. So, the more nations there are, the better it is for the Emperor, because the Emperor gets bonuses to manpower and... Manpower is this modifier, and army size. And Austria is rather small, but can field a huge army. They start off with the biggest army in the game. And France, of course, or Poland, Lithuania are much larger. But Austria gets the bonuses from all those member states. Now, on the map mode, you can see dark green. That means that they are just a member. Light green is the emperor. And the medium color is are the electors. There are seven electors. And so it's basically a republic, <laughs> the empire, where the elected president, a.k.a. emperor, serves for life. So if the Emperor dies, all of the seven... Uh, how to call it in English? Electors, Prince Electors, assemble and they choose another Emperor. He can be from the same dynasty, he can be anybody, he can even be with, uh, uh, not inside the Emperor. So they could elect the French King as King of the Holy... Uh, as Emperor. They cannot elect a president or a doge or anybody. So, for instance, the Hansa is within the empire, but they are a republic, indicated by this. So the... how is it called? Stadthalter. The Stadthalter is maybe a president. He cannot be, be elected emperor. Period. There is this little circle here, the Holy Roman Empire, we can click on it. And there it shows us the seven electors, if you don't, if you are not very familiar with the map, and who they will vote for. Bohemia will vote for itself, Cologne will vote for Austria, and so forth. And the number here indicates at how much negative or positive reasons they consider you, that is Castile, the player, to giving them their votes. So here you can see mm, Liege, Liege. Liege is a elector, and they are favoring Austria, but you can see here they also like Galway, Savoy and Bohemia a lot. They don't like us very much, you can see here why they don't like us, or why they look like us. This minus 50 is severe, and that means that rarely a non-member state will bring the emperor into the empire. What we could do it, we could ally Liege, we could make them the vassal, we could bribe them and so forth, and it is possible to become emperor if you're not a member. Especially if you're a big nation like France. France could become the emperor. That doesn't mean that they are within the empire then, because being member of the empire is determined by the province. Here you can see Lombardia is a part of the HRE. Not that Milan is a part, so... For instance, the capital of Venice is not within the HRE, so Venice is not in the HRE. 
but they hold the terra firma, that are those provinces, Brescia, Verona, Treviso and Friuli, who are part of the HRE, but because they are controlled by Venetia, they are not currently in the, in the HRE, and this is indicated by the stripes, the yellow stripes. Same thing holds true for Neumark, controlled by Poland, who is not in the HRE, but Neumark as a province is. So you can see the stripes. And this leads me to my final point that Burgundy lies at least with half their provinces within the HRE, not e if not even more. But the capital is Dijon in Bourgogne, and therefore all those provinces are not in the Empire. This gives the Emperor, Austria, a claim and a very good Casus Belli on them. They activated this Casus Belli with the Imperial Liberation here and declared war on, war on Burgundy. Maybe they will win, we'll see. So Burgundy was allied with Aragon, who did join the war, apparently, and Aragon is in a, a leads a personal union with Naples, basically Naples is their vassal, so they also called them in. Austria is allied with Cleves, the Palatinate Trier and Urbino and leads a personal union with Hungary. So they called them in. So this is actually, you can see here, a very big war. Austria versus Burgundy they are the main competitors, but the, those petty nations, <laughs> not so petty nations, but those nations are also in the war. Burgundy is at war on three separate fronts. They waged this war against Austria and Hungary. They waged a war against England and Portugal, and Venice, and so forth. And they are at war with Tuscany, so... Burgundy may be in a disadvantage here, it may bite the dust eventually. Though England has problems with rebels, as you can see here, those, re those flag indicate there is a uh, pretender rebels. Well, here we have a decision to either lose stability or to do anything else, and anything else is better than losing stability, so we're gonna go with this without really reading it, it gives us a matter to trade. I haven't talked about rebels. If you have a province that has revolt risk, we don't have, it would be shown up here in an alert legend, ledger, but let's click a province. Um, this province here, Gloucestershire has a local unrest of 3.5%. This stacks up in the stability ledger. Here you can see if we had revolt, it would be shown here, revolt risk. And if this reaches 100, we can see it if we actually have revolt risk. Rebels will spawn, they will attack you, they act like normal enemies, they will siege your provinces here successfully. And if you do not counter them, if your army gets routed, if you have problems, they could break your country, forcing you to accept their off uh, their demands. Every rebel, every different rebel, have demands. Pretender rebels want their pretender to become king. Lollard heretics want to make the Lollard religion or the Lollard heresy like uh, official faith, something like that. That means more autonomy in the provinces, and so forth. The worst kind, to my mind, are the Patriots and the Nationalists. They can spawn out of provinces where there is a suppressed or non-existent country. So in Leon, if there were a lot of unrest, Leonese rebels could spawn and they could force us to release Leon, this nation here, and we had, had, would have to give away the country here, uh, the, the provinces that are considered Leonese. If we hover over the cultural map node, we can see, okay, those four provinces are... They are the same group, they're all Iberian, but they have slight differences, and they are Leonese, and so are... And there you can check, sometimes, how much this country, how many cores they own. Also, if you want to know how big this potential country is, you can go over here. Diplomacy, view your country, create subjects, and then you can see, Le see Leon. They will receive four provinces, they are those four that have the Leonese culture, that makes sense, right? If they are less than four, they even give you the names, if you're not sure. We could release Galicia and Granada too, but as I mentioned before, this really never, or in rare, very rare cases, would make sense. Okay, we have assembled quite a big amount of money, and we will be able to... 
research this fourth admin tag soon. But as you can see, Castile is a little bit isolated here. Oh, 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 I missed that completely. Okay, Aragon, not Aragon, Morocco won the war against the Portuguese aggressors. And they took back Koita now, they had a coronet, so it, they wouldn't, uh, they didn't have to core it. They're allied with Clam Cannon Mazab. You can see here. So, and they have a truce now with us and with Portugal. The length of the truce depends on how big the war defeat was and Portugal was defeated soundly, so their truce is longer than ours. Ours will be gone in um, a few months and then we will attack, too. that's sure. So we will... I want all those three provinces because they're in our trade note and I'm gonna have to claim all three of them. Castile has a claim on this province already, shown in the diplomat mode. We want to claim those two too. Tangiers and the recovered Koita. There was Tangiers here. Here you can see that this takes some time, but because Morocco is a rival, it's quicker than it would be normally. Now we want to vassalize Navarra. We can do that because the time the 10 year truce, tru it's not a truce, but the 10 year minimum here of being a vassal expired. So we're gonna recall the diplomat here. And we're going to start the vassalization. This is a process that, a process that needs some time. It's determined by how strong your diplomatic skills are. It will use up a little bit of diplomatic power, but then this country will be implemented into our own. You will see it here, our progress is zero and it ticks with every month's end. So here you can see, okay, it will take six months, half a year, that's okay. It depends on the base tax. If Portugal were our vassal and we would annex them, it would take a much, much higher amount of Diplo points and also a much longer time. If you hover over it, it shows, actually here, it shows how this works. Because of our high diplomatic reputation, the same culture group, the same religion, and one base, we can pop up up to six base tags in one month. And therefore it takes a half a year. So basically you trade one base tax for one diplo power via vassalization. The problem with vassalization, this sounds very good, right? We peacefully vassalized them because they were weak and small and wanted to be protected by us. And then we just annex them 10 years later, so we can expand without actually doing anything, actually warring. Now France, <laughs> this I mentioned before, it's all about backstabbing and sneaky tactics here. France declares war on Burgundy because it, <laughs> they see that Burgundy uh, is a little bit in a predicament here, being at war with three nations. And now they are completely screwed because France is just the strongest faction in the game. They have a lot of manpower and well, <laughs> you can see basically in the map mode it shows the red is bigger than the green. And this doesn't say anything most of the times, but I know that Austria, France and England as a combined force will just wreck those guys. And this happens most of the time. It's not very often that you can see Burgundy prevailing actually. Because they're just such a, a juicy target. France is very eager to take on the French. Our truce with Morocco ended, that's great. So we can attack them. If we hover over the cultural map mode, France is very eager to take all those French provinces that are controlled by Burgundy. Austria, as I mentioned before, wants to take back those lands that are rightfully part of the empire. And England uh, and Burgundy just war over Calais most of the times. One thing I didn't mention. The Emperor can try... Okay, we... Wait, wait a second. For, first things first. First, let's talk about integration. Now, we integrated Navarra. As a penalty, we'll get a 10-year diplomatic reputation decrease. Shown here. We are now at zero, so we cannot effectively vassalize another nation for 10 years. We got 5 prestige and we fulfilled our mission, so we got admin points. The problem is there that 
the autonomy will always be at 75%, which is very high. We could lower it at the cost of increased unrest by 10. And if you see here, we are now at negative 5.8. So if we were to decrease autonomy by 25, we would actually get unrest here. I'm going to do that because 4.2 unrest in one province isn't really a big deal. And now you can see here, we actually have unrest. It would take 20.8 years for the rebels to spawn. This could be earlier or later, depending on your luck. And 20 years, well, that's irrelevant. We are now above our force limit. Because we inherited those infantry, so I'm gonna abandon them. Disband them, I meant. And we're also over our naval force limit by one. We got one cork, I'm gonna disband it too, because who needs corks? Who needs caucus? <laughs> okay. Let's take the province, uh, the mission of Paper Controller again. And invest a little bit here. Ooh. We actually have now only a 14% chance. Right, I wanted to tell you something about the Emperor passing, passing reforms. If the emperor, emperor got 50 Imperial Authority, he can try to pass one reform. This basically gives them uh, them, the Emperor and all the member states, a, bo a boost. Some princes want it, some princes doesn't want it, and this will change when the Imperial Authority gets higher. If it reaches 50, you most of the time will be able to pass a reform. If you pass all eight reforms, the Empire, as you can see here, will unify into one state. One government, one R Reich. <laughs> An early Reich. If you are a player and you control Austria, it's very easy to form the Empire within like 100-200 years. The AI is seldomly successful. They may be able to pass one or two reforms, but that's it. And so the Emperor wants, of course, to gain Imperial authority, which is not very easy. The best thing is if a foreign power attacks one of the Emperor states, then you will be called automatically in a war. You can decide not to, but you're, you would be stupid to do that. So in, for instance, if Denmark attacks the Hansa, the Austrians will be asked if they want to defend. If they say yes, and then they feed, then they defeat the Denmark, the Denmark forces, they'll get a lot of Imperial authority. Another thing is if they release member states that are suppressed, for instance Luxembourg here is a member state that is suppressed by a foreign power or by another member state for that matter, they will get also imperial authority. So if they were to declare on Bohemia and release Silesia here, they would get a lot of imperial authority. I hope that's clear. So here one to my mind the second biggest event that is possible in the whole game happens. There are some events that will happen most of the time who are very, very game-changing and big. And there are two that come to my mind. One is the Burgundy Inheritance and one is the Iberian Wedding. Now, if you look at Spain today, you'll see that Aragon doesn't exist. Castile and Aragon are just one, one state, one government. How did it come to that? It came to that by the, via the Iberian Wedding. Ferdinand II, King of Aragon, was married to the Princess Isabella of Castile in Valladolid in October 1469. This was a marriage of political opportunism, not romance. The court of Aragon dreamed of a return to Castile and Isabella needed help to gain succession to the throne. The marriage initiated a dark and troubled life in which Ferdinand fought on the Castilian and Aragonese fronts, both in order to impose his authority over the noble oligarchies shifting his basis of support from one kingdom to the other according to the intensity of the danger. Despite the political nature of the union, he loved Isabella sincerely. So it was also a romantic union. Interesting. Many considered Ferdinand the savior of his kingdoms, a bringer of unity. Others despised him for having oppressed them. <laughs> Machiavelli, the great Machiavelli, attributed to him the objectable qualities of the Renaissance prince. If you haven't read... Oh, how is it called in English? 
Maybe the prince? I don't know. The book that Machiavelli wrote. He only wrote one book. Or the duke. I don't know. You have to read it. <laughs> Especially if you want to play <laughs> play EU4. A lot what he says in there holds true. Okay, we have a decision to make. We can say no to that marriage. Let us marry a local talent instead. We would gain one stability and Aragon would dislike us more. Aragon already hates us. And one stability is sweet, but... If we say, let us bind the dynasties to ours. Then Castile forms a personal union with Aragon. Juan de Trastamara. Under our king. Our opinions would increase considerably. A lot of noble regiment rebels will spawn in Soira because they're pissed that our Aragonese king will become our king. And Milan and Urbino will hate us. Uh, because... yeah, because they are allied with Aragon. Now, you can already imagine that this is very, very powerful. I'm gonna raise maintenance here because we, want, we will have to fight rebels in Soria or Soira? Soria, where is it? Da, da, da. If you don't know where a province is, you can click this Find Province button, shortcut F, and give it... Type it in. Soria is <laughs> here, right in my face. Supply limit is 19, so we can stack 19 regiments there. And we know that the rebels will spawn there, so I'm gonna move my troops in there and then let the enemy attack and therefore I'm gonna change my units to Latin Medieval Infantry because they are stronger at defending and Latin Knights, same holds true here. So this would be an easy victory for us. We will form a personal union over Aragon. This means because they lead a personal union with Naples, we will inherit that union too. So we will basically get control over all of those lands, which is huge. It basically doubles our whole empire. This is massive. This is so strong and we don't have to do anything for it except fighting 17 noble regiments. This is a very low price to pay. You can leave a decision here for three months, then it will automatically pick the first one. So we will let one month pass and then we're going to attack. So let's move in here. If we move in here we will suffer attrition because the province cannot support all the regiments. But that's not too bad and we have a little bit of a low... Hmm. I think we can wait one more month. Let's pick this, it gives us a little bit more shock. Let's wait one more month, let's fast forward here. Uh, oh, our king died. Ah, general died. Okay. Doesn't matter, we check it, we have high morale. Not not maximum, but high. Our king is in, pl in charge and let's bind our dynasties. BAM! We have formed the personal union over Naples, we have formed the personal union over Aragon, and the rebels have risen up there. If you look now, this sweet turquoise color means wait a second, means that they're our subjects or our overlords. It's the same color, so we also already could be under Aragonese rule. We are not allied to Portugal anymore. Violet means that there's only a royal marriage between us, no alliance. This can be because... Yes, so Portugal lost the war against Morocco and Morocco first took back Coita and it forced them to abandon the alliance with us. So we cannot ally them until their truce with Morocco runs out. This holds true until October 63, so it's five more years, then we will be able to ally them again. Here you can see a war. We're, lose, we're winning that handily because there's a terrain penalty and we're outnumbering them heavily. And when their morale is gone, they will disintegrate. And bury their stupid 
ambitions there. We can recruit another general because our old one died. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now. And interestingly, uh, Aragon was at war, if you remember, with Burgundy. Of course, because they're in a personal union now, where they are prohibited to do anything, they seeded out of the war. They, are, they can't be at war on their own. Only if we declare on somebody, they will join automatically. They also abandon their alliances, because they are basically not independent anymore. So Burgundy got a little bit of a bonus here with Aragon seeding out of the war, but... <laughs> no! I forgot it! Aragon was on the side of Burgundy, <laughs> so they're screwed even more now. Look at this! Ha! Nice! Uh, if you uh, are interested, uh, Hungary being under a personal union with Austria is also due to an event. Basically, the Habsburgs took over the Hungarian throne there. It's also a very strong event, but Hungary is not as powerful as Aragon and Naples both. Now we have two... we have... like... Extinguished Navarra, so we have one more diplomatic relation free, th free, but we have gained two more with Naples and Aragon, so we have now three out of four. We can take on one more diplomatic relation. We have suffered losses here in the war and we will replenish them eventually. If we have high maintenance, it will go faster. If we lower our maintenance, because now we are actually making negative money, we want to prevent that, lowering the maintenance to half. Look at this, not all of the men will be replenished in time, in one month. But of course in the next month, now we can lower it even further. Yeah, that's too low. We want 180. Right, let's, look, let's leave it at that. And, sweet. We can research, actually first, there is alert, too few rivals, we can pick another rival. We had Aragon as a rival, but we can't rival a subject, right? So let's rival somebody else. Austria are our buddies, they like us. We could rival England because they rivaled us. The Ottomans are historical enemies. They are blobbing here in the east. Portugal, no, they like us too. Mamluks, I think England is the best option here. So we rival them and uh, if you remember, we also, uh, under economy actions, can issue an embargo. This will increase our power projection. Zick. Wait a second. Morocco, France, England. Right. We can also embargo f uh, Morocco there. Poor uniforms. Damn them. Castile gets pure uniforms, which is a morale decrease. You can't do anything against it. It's just random, but it's only for two years. If this happens in a dense, in a tense war, this would be bad, but... Right. Okay. Our units are fully replenished, so I'm gonna decrease our maintenance to zero. And before I'm ending the episode here, I want to research this national ID group. Costs us a lot of admin power. And this gives us nothing except freeing a slot for exploration ideas. Every idea costs 400 of the respective power, therefore we can Res not research, I uh, say, yeah, maybe research colonial ventures. Enables us to send more colonists to un- more, they say, our first colonist to uncharted lands. With the colonist, we can go to colonial map mode and see if there are free colonies, but there are none. So we actually can't do anything right now. We have to wait until we can research this quest for the new world, which allows us to explore this beautifully unknown land. Then we can actually find provinces that are not inhabited and they we can colonize. This will be all for today. I thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next episode.